All right. Next, we have our general items. And for this next item, um, 14, we are acting as City Council and Board of Directors um, of the Public Financing Authority. So we have the financing water, uh, wastewater treatment plant improvements, and we have Spencer. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Spencer Morrison, Accounting Manager and City Treasurer. I'm bringing before you tonight the 2018 Wastewater Revenue Bond Staff Report, which will provide funds to rehabilitate and replace aging equipment and treatment process units. Uh, joining me tonight are other important members of the financing team. We have Robin Bertagna, your Finance Director, Diana Langley, your Public Works Director, Mandeep Chohan, Senior Engineer, we also have in the audience Mark Northcross of NHA Advisors as the financial advisor of this deal, and Chick Adams, Bond Counsel uh, with Jones Hall. Both of these gentlemen and their staff provide invaluable guidance uh, in this very complex process. Other staff contributors were uh, Darren Gale, Arnaldo Rodriguez, uh, Lynn Hale, and Jamie Teske of the water plant. Uh, these staff members provide important input and support throughout the process. And to speak about these the, the projects themselves, uh, please welcome Senior Engineer and Project Manager Mandeep uh, Chauhan to the podium. Good evening. So this, uh, this slide shows the aerial picture of the wastewater treatment facility and the various uh, improvements, location where the improvements are going to happen on, these, uh, on this slide. It includes the replacement of the bar screens, of the existing bar screen, which, is, uh, which was installed back in 2005 and had some safety concerns during maintenance. And the next project is the replacement of the digester covers with the stainless steel covers. These existing covers are over 40, about 45 years old. And they're in structural, uh, there's some structural problems with them and it needs to be replaced. And the next project is the installation of the new dewatering facility. facility uh, which will replace the existing dewatering belt press, which does not have any redundancy and has passed its useful life. So the the council authorized the public works director to uh, award uh, to uh, advertise for the bids, and uh, the bids were advertised in June, and uh, the bids were opened on July 31st. Five bids were received. And staff is estimating at this time the total construction cost of $23.6 million of this project, and will uh, the staff will be providing a better uh, estimate on uh, during the award presentation um, and the staff uh, through the uh, staff report, which will be happening, anticipating that will happen in October and award will be bought before the council in October, as is stated. The Public Works has been working on this project, this improvement project, for many years. The 2006 Wastewater Master Plan update identified the needs for the digester improvements as well as the SCADA improvements. SCADA is a control system, automation system for the wastewater treatment facility. Through the continuous operation of the bar screens, the watering, and additional electrical improvements were identified around 2010, and since then the project has been developed. And the uh, needs for those this, uh, the additional projects is the maintenance needs, the safety, long-term, and long-term operations, and reliability of the facility that are really necessary for our facilities' continuous operation. Uh, the council awarded a pre-design contract back in 2015 and the design contract for the design of this project back in 2016. So in brief, the goal of this project is to rehab the existing equipment to extend its useful life. Number two, the replacement of the aging equipment proactively before its failure. And the bottom line is to keep the facility in compliance with the city's discharge permit. So 
this, uh, this project will not add any additional capacity to the facility and it is totally independent of the NPDES permit which is in the process of renewal. In other words, NPDES permit will be renewed uh, without the interference of completion of this project. The repayment, of, uh, the repayment for this uh, uh, project bill is included in the current rate plan, the current rate uh, that was completed back in 2016, and the project included in the adopted, B, uh, adopted CIP budget. So all of these projects have been included in the, in the CIP budget that has been adopted by the council. And I will be happy to answer any questions now or at the en end of the presentation after Spencer uh, finishes his his presentation through, through the mayor yeah. so, uh, Samantha you, you're uh, stating that there's no increase in capacity but could you talk a little bit about uh, by putting the new uh, lids on the digesters how that facilitates um, continual operation so they don't have to be taken down and, and rehabbed um, and, and put us offline with those correct so the the new digester lids we are going to replace with the fixed stainless steel covers and the stainless steel covers does not need any coating or recoating. Uh, what that does is that we do not need to take a digester out of service for longer duration. If we don't take that action now then that will necessitate to add a new digester at the cost of eight nine million dollars in today's dollars. So with this project, we are delaying and postponing the addition of additional digester. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All right. So the revenue bonds, uh, we're looking at, uh, these revenue bonds will provide funding uh, for project construction engineering and construction management contingency, uh, and then other uh, financing costs, uh, such as uh, cost of issuances and underwriter fees and discounts. We're looking at a maximum of $26 million to cover all, all of these costs, uh, again, as a maximum, not knowing exactly how the, what the bid award is going to be. They are secured by net wastewater fund revenues over the next 30 years. And debt service is estimated to be about 1.3 million annually. As you follow along at these meetings and read the financials throughout the recent years, uh, you also know that the wastewater funds have experienced historically healthy funds, uh, appropriate rate setting, uh, the plant uh, that has a capacity for more connections, and uh, the funds themselves in the most recent CAFR, that would be the 1617 CAFR, had $107.8 million in assets and uh, liabilities of about $39 million. Uh, this slide shows uh, that the financing team forecast a debt uh, service coverage ratio above the 120% uh, requirement as uh, long as we have revenue and expense uh, projections um, out there, which uh, you'll hear us every time we come talk about bonds and debt service. You'll hear that that one one point two or one hundred twenty percent figure. Last week, this financing team made a credit presentation to S and P, during which we demonstrated strong coverage and liquidity, showed consistent and long-term commitment to reviewing rates, and this council has set them at appropriate levels explained that the fund's largest rate payers are stable, mentioned that a high percentage of the revenues are fixed, namely, you know, if you think about residential rates, uh, the residential residents have uh, fixed sewer rates each year. And we're looking for a double A minus with a stable outlook, which would be a small improvement on our current rating. So the recommendation uh, for the Yuba City uh, Public Financing Authority will be to authorize issuance and sale of 2018 wastewater revenue bonds for a maximum of $26 million. And for the City Council, the recommendation is to authorize issuance and sale of 2018 wastewater revenue bonds for a maximum of $26 million and approve related documents and actions. 
Do you have any questions from myself or this great financing team that we've assembled here tonight? <laughs> great, thank you, Spencer. Any questions at this time for the team? I just question for, for Spencer. So Spencer, the, the financing strategy is, um, is a solid strategy that, that we've used in the past, correct? correct? Um, it gets um, all the financing in place to be able to do this work and we're not just simply playing with monopoly money, am I correct? I would say that's very accurate. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions or comments for Spencer? I have a question anyone? real quick through the mayor. Um, what are the bond percentage expectations or are we going to have to wait for that? Because uh, I know uh, we have worked very hard to improve our ratings and show the stability, which is showing just the fact that we have a double A minus, which means it's, you know, like having two A's and just not quite the A plus and stuff. And um, um, we've worked very hard to be stable, strong, uh, and get our ratings up. And we've saved over, by refinancing because of that, millions of dollars over a period now for a few years uh, and into the future. Um, so very strong in our financial um, endeavors to pay or have the taxpayers money not wasted in any way shape or form in fact actually taking a dollar and getting a dollar ten for it dollar twenty if we can do that and I think we do uh, actually do that because of our good ratings so what what is the bond expectations I'm going to yield the microphone to Mark Northcross okay. with NHA Looks advisors. like he's already stepped up <laughs> Thank you. Great question. We do not know the actual interest rate until the bonds are sold at competitive bid. That's actually Correct. a legal term for bond sales in California. And we're going to use that legal technique. And it really is similar to a public works contract. We, at a particular time certain, we will accept bids from the bond underwriting community. And the lowest interest rate bid wins the bid. So it's been used for years. It went out of fashion after the financial meltdown in 2008 for good reason. It's back. So thank God. So we'll have, you'll get the full story and you'll see who the covers and all that were. So the question though is what's, what do we estimate the interest rate is? Uh, we, this competitive bid will be in September. Right now I'd say the all in interest rate we estimate giving effect to the cost of issuance, you know, the front end costs, equivalent of the APR in a home mortgage is about 3.9%, okay? Uh, and we're, we think we're being conservative, but we're guessing what the future is gonna be, but the bond market has been relatively stable. And for 30 year fixed rate money under 4%, that's a, that's a good number. Really good. So yeah, that's, that's what we hope for, so. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And, and then I'm having another kind of a question. Um, being that this is, I guess, what we call a municipal infrastructure bond, and that's usually considered stable, long-term funding for investors that want to save and not take high risks on anything, um, is this the kind of thing that um, somebody who sells bonds and stuff would want to sell to a general public for uh, their portfolio to ensure that um, because it's stable and it's strong. Yes, uh, utility revenue bonds, water and wastewater are the amongst the most secure bonds in the United States. And to borrow a term used by bond traders, these are what we call widow and orphan bonds. Okay. You sell these to your grandmother, okay? You, you, you put them in your kid's college education fund because Water and wastewater just do not default in the state of California. It is a really solid investment. And if you want a higher yield, you're going to have to go do something else. And that's why you, one of the reasons you're getting, you're under 4% fixed for 30 years. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Thank you, Spencer. Um, we will go ahead and bring it back for action. The mayor moved to approve as a staff recommendation. Okay. Can move forward. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposition? Okay, great, thank you. It was obvious I was for it. <laughs>